Hey, it's Todd Alton. Welcome to day four of what could be the best show ever about risk. Now, I said could be. That's a disclaimer. It's a it's a, it's a statement of what could be possibility. It may be the best show ever. I am Todd Alton, your host, 30-year uh, Wall Street veteran. This is Jason Bartholomew. How's everybody doing today? Got some exciting you news. Are, Jason is a professional poker player and uh, consummate bullshit. I mean, uh, professional. Uh, Jason, what's going on in the markets? I know things are crazy today. SPAC Jesus is going to be a topic today. If you like SPAC Jesus, you got to stay atten- You got to stay tuned today to a special coverage on Clover, Clover Health. Is it Clover Health Investment Corp? Come on, spit it out, Todd. It's Clover Health Investment. Investment. Yeah. You got to stay tuned for that. We're a little choppy today. Why are we choppy? Because we're in a new studio and I can hear myself echoing. It's really freaking me out. But we're in a new studio today because we're not able to use Brad Lee's studio, but we are building our own. So stay tuned and maybe someday you could be a guest in our studio. Like anyone would want to do that. Let's talk about the market. Uh, generally, the. Uh, See Jason taking over right there? That's all great. the news is great today. We got the Dow Jones Industrial Average up 300 points, 1%. The NASDAQ was also up 1% at 137 points. The SP was also up 1%, 37. Uh, the only bad news from my standpoint, because uh, of course this isn't investment uh, information or anything, I'm not recommending anything, but gold and silver were both pummeled today. Gold and silver were down a lot. And the reason they were down is because of the progress on the COVID relief package. And also the jobless claim numbers came in uh, very good. The street was was expecting 835,000 jobless claims. And there was only 779,000 actual. So that propelled the market ahead. Uh, Biotechs actually helped helped lead the way as well. Uh, Gold was down $40 an ounce and silver was down 50 cents an ounce. I don't know how you feel about that GameStop trade, but that's down 85% from the peak. No risk on there. Did you see oil up again? How much? Uh, 1% again, steady growth. Right. But can we talk about GameStop for a second? Yeah, let's go ahead. Get into it. What's what's the story there? Down 85%. Is it a hold uh, situation or I'm just kidding around. I don't know what they're doing there. What? What's Wall Street Bet saying about GameStop being down 85 from the peak? I think most of them have capitulated. Uh, they, Ouch. Yeah, the diamond hands, as they were uh, world-renowned for, because let's face it, there were people buying all over the world. They are now paper hands, and now they've capitulated. I think GameStop is 53 after hours. Yeah, I saw it at 52. We'll, have to, we'll put up that chart in a few minutes. It got crushed. I mean, where's the bottom? Uh... Wow. I don't know. Yeah. You can't pick that bottom, can you? Yeah. I mean, all the brokerages are allowing them to uh, to take uh, max positions on the buy side now. So I mean, right. we'll see. The buyers didn't step in today. If you have a $25 billion market cap and you go down, uh, well, you're down 85%. Yeah. I mean, that's real loss. Yeah. I, Someone's got to pay, right? Yeah. AMC is right there with them. What's that guy saying on Wall Street? Someone's got to pay. Ain't going to be me. <laughs> Anyways, let's... uh. There, I, you know, obviously silver's down a little bit, gold's down. I know you're; those are trades that you're a little disappointed in, but we'll see what happens. We're still issuing a lot of currency, so I don't know why that yeah. uh, long term the trend is still there, right? Nothing's changed. It was just, uh, you know, a better than uh, better than expected jobless claims, and also some more progress in the COVID relief package. Uh, so, so Chamath, the SPAC Jesus, as he's called. He did a deal with a SPAC for Clover, Clover Health. I can't say it right. What's wrong with me? Let me Clover look at Health. It. Yeah. And uh, the same people that took um, Nicola to the woodshed, Yep. they apparently uh, are targeting Clover, huh? Hindenburg Research. You know, the Hindenburg. Hinden- you know what happened to Hey, Hindenburg. for full disclosure, I bought Clover today right at the bell. So want to make sure you guys know I'm not recommending it. I own 500 whopping shares, which is eh, whatever. But I tend to believe that Chamath's a pretty smart guy. There'll be a little battle here with Hennenberg, but why don't you give us a little outline? This is uh, what we're being told. There is a little bit of a war going on here, right? I mean, these are some serious allegations. Apparently, uh, the Hindenburg Research has been looking into this for four months. I mean, they've been looking into it before they actually you know, went public. So uh, they're actually saying that they have a dozen interviews with former employees, competitors, industry experts, Uh, They're just saying that they didn't disclose some, uh, it appears to be active investigations by the Department of Justice. That's their claim, not Mm. mine. So, Yeah, we're not claiming that. So this is Hindenburg saying this? Yes. Right. So So what's their thesis? Clover is what? 
Clover has defrauded investors. That's, That's what they're claiming. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, we're not claiming that, Chamath. We're on your side, buddy. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, they're so bold and brazen about it. They actually uh, added they added Chamath in the uh, in the tweet on Twitter. Wow. I mean, this they're going after it. This is going to be a. Are we going to be able to put this up on the screen? Like, can we put a picture of the tweet? I mean, I th hey Skyla, yeah. hey Skyla, one of our producers is going to put that on the screen for us. What do you say to that, Skyla? Yeah, All it's right. definitely getting a lot of hits here Will on you Twitter. You make sure Skyla gets that tweet. Yeah, I can definitely make sure that happens. So, what I mean, you want to talk any more about Clover? Not really. We're going to see how this develops. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about Ford. Oh, I like Ford. I'm long Ford, too, just for the full disclosure. It looks like just before we went on air, the uh, earnings report came out. It looked pretty good. 34 cents. Yeah, expected a minus 7 cents, so they crushed EPS. They killed it. And they're going to put $29 billion into EV. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. Right. Are you going to buy one of those uh, EV Hummers? They don't make Hummers, do they? Uh, no, they I'm don't. Sorry, that's no. GM. That's GM. No, yeah, that's, that's right. a G I think that's a separate private company. Yeah, that's yeah. right. But... Uh, I, I think I'm going to buy a Raptor. That's their pickup truck. That's their pickup truck. Right? Yeah. Right. Are they going to make it? Now that I live in Nevada, I feel like I have to have a gun on my hip and a, and a Ford. What do you guys think? <laughs> Are you going to? You could open carry. Was it open carry? Yeah, right. You could. You could be like. Could a, I have a holster, a gun on both sides? You could have like two six shooters. With all the haters I have, that gun probably comes in handy. Yeah, I would say that that'd be pretty fun. Right, but you're kind of the gun guy, right? Yeah, I like to conceal carry though. You do conceal carry. You have one on, on you right now. Uh, I cannot disclose that, but I, I may or may not do. have I one. I bet on. you do. <laughs> but yeah, Ford is. Can we check? Where is it in the aftermarket? Let's make sure we put up that chart. That's a uh, that's an incredible story of turnaround from the low, right? And believe it or not, still owned by the Ford family, still in control. Can you tell after me all these years? I correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think they took the bailout money like everyone else. They never did. No. That's right. Right. So I remember that. I was right. They're the only ones that didn't. They didn't go bankrupt. They borrowed a ton of money. I want to say was it, it wasn't Alan Mulally who was there was some guy maybe from Boeing that was in charge of Ford then, and he really foresaw things that were an issue, and they borrowed like borrowed like twenty five billion dollars, and they hung in there. Um, they're, I mean, the stock is up dramatically, but the company yeah. hasn't performed well for a while. But now they're putting a ton of money in EV. Yeah. I mean, they have to. I mean, look, look, that's where it's going. I mean, right. General Motors was Where's it? Can charge. you check and see where it is in the aftermarket? Yeah. Let me check right now. I'm pretty sure it's around 1150. 1137. Oh, Skyler's yeah, on. That's in the aftermarket? Actually, no, it's uh, it's 1167 right now. Yeah. Come on, man. You're scaring me, man. I'm yeah. on a little Ford. Don't oh. go down on me. Go up. Yeah, it looks That's like not a, a recommendation, by the way. No. You guys but, should definitely not follow my recommendations. If you did, it would not be good for you. No, so man. revenue was $33.26 billion. Expected was 33.89. So they just barely missed on revenue. So Missed on revenue, made it on earnings, yeah. and they're up in the aftermarket. Yeah. Solid. It's a solid long, in my opinion. If you, I'm, not, I'm not recommending that. but Now, Elon, you know I'm trying to get you on my show. I want to be clear with you that I did buy a Cybertruck. I got on the list right away, and I put that whopping $100 deposit you requested. And I would have put more down, but you only wanted $100. And so, you know, I know I'm trying to get you on the show, and I hope you do come on my podcast, and I am buying a Cybertruck. I had no choice but to do that. So Elon has a place here in Nevada, right? He's got a factory here, a gigafactory, right? Yeah, that's in Reno. Yeah. Well, I'm not going up there anytime soon. Yeah, I don't know if Elon does much traditional gambling in the casinos, but it sure would be nice if he would stop through here in Las Vegas. What would he do here? I'm hit not the, hit the buffet. Well, there's not many buffets open right now. He's got to be careful with all that stress. He'll end up looking like me. <laughs> it's true. You know, when you run that many companies, the stress level is high. Yeah. One of our producers is in the uh, in the in the office today. He's looking right at me, so I got to comment on other people. I mean, you really don't sleep that much. No, a terrible sleep. You definitely need sleep. Yep. What else we got going on? Well, the big risk on play today was ticker AACG. AACG. This is a Chinese, I mean, okay. Chinese education stock? Yeah. Right. It's the, uh, you know, I don't want to say the words. They, one of them starts with P, the other one starts with D. Um, you think it's a pump and dump? Yeah. I mean, what's moving in? There was no news. It actually moved 1,275%. What's the symbol again? AACG. I think for full disclosure, didn't we trade that today? We traded the sympathy of it. It's just for fun. A right? little a brother. Shares yeah, METX. Yeah. You can look at it. It was up. On oh, no. Right. You're right. Yeah. Sorry. We didn't trade that one. Yeah. METX. Yeah, METX. So which one was the pump, you think? I think they both were. Right. Yeah. But these Chinese indoor education plays, like GSX has been on Carson Block's 
Yeah. Isn't it GSX? It's been on Carson Block's shortlist for a while. Yeah, wasn't it? Wasn't G- Genius too? G N U S. Remember that one? Yeah, but that's a different. Is I mean, that a that's different like indoor education? Okay, I thought that's that a was. Genius Brands is like a. Uh, they're like uh, education for kids. That's okay. kind of been, oh, you're right. Maybe that's in the U.S. indoor. Okay. But GSX, I believe, I, I feel like I need to look it up now. GSX was a, a, Muddy Waters. Let's has, take a look at it. Has been taking shots at this for a while now. In fact, I saw him the other day. He just said it was a scam. Um, but it's it rallied to like 140, 150 bucks, and that's a Chinese indoor education play too. Let me look. Okay, it up. yeah, GSX Tech. EDU. Right, eighty-seven today up a dollar fifty-four. Let's look at the one year. But the Chinese indoor sort of like uh, home education stocks have been doing really well. Wow, that thing went to a hundred. Yeah, it went over a hundred. Wow. Right. So this, so which one's the play here? Is there a, is there is there a risk on trade here or something you think it's going to follow through or you just think it today we're just reporting what happened today? It's too risky to follow through with. There's no news or catalyst. Mm-hmm. It was just a. Uh, with METX, I did see it in some of the chat rooms, and the actual float was reasonable. So as a sympathy to the AACG play, a lot of the traders got behind it and, and did some quick uh, ninja scalps, if you will. This AV, AVXL, this was a sympathy to that uh, SAVA. Yeah, the biotech sympathy. Right, the biotech, yeah. So the Alzheimer's space is hot. Very hot. Oh, God, please. Please leave the Alzheimer's space spot hot for me, please, please. Oh, God. In fact, well, you know, uh, SAVA, it did fall back today to 63. But, I mean, it was... It was on a tear. It was 128 yesterday after hours. It was 128 after hours. Yeah. Right? So... And some, I, I heard a story today of a guy who bought some 30,000 shares at $2. That's amazing. Yeah, he sold... I mean, he sold them at 100. That's incredible. But he couldn't sell it all because his broker-dealer wouldn't let him sell it all because of the volatility mark. There's a problem with NSCC. These brokers have to put up a lot of collateral for these volatile, volatile stocks. I mean, you're finding uh, that's a you know that's been exposed because of GME. That's one thing that they did that was very positive. Right, is we got to see some of the flaws in the system. So GME, you think it's finding a, a, a some flatness here or some legs because it's down forty dollars. Let's see what happens. Can I it hold? I think it just saw fifty two. Can it hold fifty? That's yeah. Yeah, let's see. I mean, wonder if the fundamentals have changed since yesterday. Nothing's changed, and they still haven't raised money. They're still. I think they might. They could possibly do an offering now. Kind of a FOMO, their fear of missing out of getting capital. So if they did an offering now, say at forty, then it would be down ninety percent from its high. Yeah, and that would be the the targeted time for the management team at GameStop to raise capital. It wasn't at four hundred or three hundred or two hundred. Could it be at forty? I mean, that seems like maybe they're just waiting to market time it. I mean. They're waiting for the best spot, obviously. So, I mean, now it's 40. I'm being sarcastic, obviously. No. Well, I think we could tell that. Yeah. I mean, it's just amazing. But you had a lot more on your list. It seems like we're a little slow here. Well, I mean, we got to talk about, well, let's talk about Apple and Hyundai. Apple car? Yes. That's exciting. It looks like they're close to closing a deal where they can manufacture an Apple branded autonomous. So Apple slapped Hyundai before when they leaked the information. Yes. And they kind of gave the indication, shame on you, we're not going to do a deal with you. Yes. But they're moving to the Peachtree State. I mean, they're going to make cars in the Peachtree State, what, 30 minutes south of Atlanta? Yeah, it's going to be in Georgia, uh, West Point, Georgia. I didn't know there was such a place, but... Right. Yeah. I think this is because Hyundai has uh, Hyundai has uh, extra capacity there. Yeah, also their EV technology seems to be pretty solid from what I've seen. I think you need to comment below if you have any thoughts on whether in 2024 Apple can possibly deliver an autonomous car by then. If you're starting right now, you got three years to get there. You're going to use a Hyundai factory to deliver an autonomous car. Well, they have the money, right? Absolutely. I mean, it's not like they need to raise any capital. And will, when will the they government... Have something like between 150 and $200 billion cash, right? Tons of money. Right. So they could afford... Maybe they can get there in 2024. Or maybe they're just saying, we really want to be there by 2024. We're going to stretch hard to get there. Do you think we'll be driving autonomous vehicles? I saw today... Well, technically, if it was autonomous, we wouldn't be driving. But well, I, I saw today the that they think there's a, tr- a 10... I saw this on CNBC. A $10 trillion opportunity in mobility. Right. Yeah. And the new CEO of Hyundai, was it Hyundai or Kia? Sorry. It, they're together. It's Oh, Hyundai, Kia is yeah. the same thing? Yeah, they're together. Well, I saw that he uh, was very big on this idea that 
the company would become a mobility company. And so to team up with Apple, I think over there in South Korea, they're probably going crazy, right? I mean, yeah. I mean, they love they love they love Samsung. They do, but they're going to use they're going to make Apple cars. That's, I mean, that's huge. Apple is. You what think else? Samsung's going to make a car. I don't know. Maybe. Do they have the money? Samsung's rich. They're yeah. the biggest phone maker in the world. Yeah. We'll see. What else we got today? I mean, oh, well, uh, hey, Apple Car. I'm, I, I think it's great news. Exciting. I mean, I there's really a think... revolution going on. So you'd argue if Apple's going to make a car with uh, Kia slash Hyundai, mm -hmm. who's going to make a car with Ford? Now, I'm talking up my own book a little bit. I understand. I'm long Ford for full disclosure. I own the stock. Uh, enough to be dangerous, maybe like 100000 worth or something. Well, what's Google doing? Because are yeah, who they, are they going to make a car with? Right, right. That's a good question. Maybe Google buys Tesla. That would be. Is that possible? Uh, well, it's two, two, one trillion, like close to one trillion market caps yeah. together, make two trillion. Who knows? Obviously, this is going to be an exciting sector to follow. Mobility, it's happening in a big way. I own a Mercedes. Two. What was my Mercedes called? What do you have, an S? S550, which may be the greatest car ever made, ever, like the show. And I love this car. I mean, I love this car. My friend Eric had one, and I bought one. I love it. But it has, like, I have a little kind of semi-assisted driving. Mm -hmm. But when you turn it on, it's like a drunk person is driving autonomously. Like, it goes to the side of the road here. So, the, But as it gets better, people are going to upgrade. It's a big cycle. It's going to be a big upgrade. In Las Vegas, it can't. It's not possible. You've seen the roads around here? They don't even have lines in the roads. They're wide. You don't even know like if it's three lanes, one lane, two lanes. Right. I mean, the producer and I were driving the other day. I had no clue where the lanes were. Who was the producer? Skyla. Oh, yeah. 20 years old, she's a producer. How does that happen? Well. Is it her good looks or is it does she know somebody? It could be both. Could be. Yeah. Oh, sorry about that. I got to talk into the mic. Apologize. So, yeah, so that pretty much covered everything uh, in the market I wanted to cover today. The oil. Everything you want to cover? Oil hitting new highs again? Yeah, oil's hitting, uh, well, hitting as, new. As Apple and Ford invest in EV, right. oil hits new highs. Yeah. They're going to make a lot of plastic dishes. I mean, demand is still increasing. Is For it? the most part, you know, realistically, uh, a lot of the lockdowns have been eased up. So I just want to, I wanted to make a comment directly to Ferrari. Recently, I've been driving an F5, 450, wait, F458, right. which is a naturally aspirated car, which is the most wonderful thing ever. And then I drove a 488. I don't want an electric Ferrari. Don't give in to EV. Just don't even waste your time. Don't ruin the Ferrari. Sorry, back to our regular programming. I mean, would you buy a, a Ferrari that's EV? No. Not at all? What if that's all they made? I'd be sad. You, you wouldn't buy a Lambo. No, I, Lambo is uh, new money. Yeah. I'm old money. I'm yeah. 51. Yeah. Right. But just for the record, I don't own a, Fer a Ferrari. Wait, how does Ford and McLaren? Yeah, I rent them. You could buy a McLaren. Yeah, I, don't, I think I'm too fat. Mm. Oh, shit. I'm not supposed to bring that up. <laughs> what else you got? Uh, well, I wanted to talk a little bit about this uh, new bill in Nevada here, since how we live here. Okay, so in Nevada, apparently, you can form your own country. Now, I think if this wasn't a conspiracy, I think it's true. Uh, Jason has done the research. Uh, why don't you tell us about how we can form our own country and our own, you know, police department or whatever nonsense you're going to tell me. So Let's we can we can have like the alt tribe of like Greater Las Vegas, like up somewhere in the desert. Well, we could do that too. I mean, we just have to own a certain amount of acres. I think it's fifty thousand acres or more. And then you could be your own city. Yeah, like Governor Sisolak here in Nevada. But what's it called? Let's. Is there a bill or is there a? a... Um, well, they're called innovation zones. Now, I, actually, I have heard about this recently, uh, an iconic brand, and I mean iconic brand I was talking to. They're talking about moving to northern Nevada up in the Reno area, and they're, but they're on an Indian reservation. Okay. So I, tell me about this innovation zone. I think I know who that is, but I don't think. Yeah, I'm, you can't say yeah, anything. Yeah, I really can't say anything about that one. Right. But that's pretty cool. So, yeah, the innovation zones, uh, Nevada bill would allow, uh, you know, tech companies to create their own uh Basically, their own governments, their own schools, their own tax system, wow. their own courts. In fact, there is a company, Blockchains LLC, who owns 67,000 acres in Nevada, and they are... Everything's got to go back to blockchain now, doesn't it? Hey, they're getting ready to try to build a smart city. 
up uh, I think it's east of Reno. Okay, smash that like button if you want to form your own country. Right here in Nevada. Would we have to mine Bitcoin? Maybe that'll be the currency of the new country. That would be incredible. Could you imagine that? It's possible. And we could have our own, maybe we could make our own guns too. You know, this whole theory of my son Enzo, by the way, I told you Ferrari, I named my, you know, my youngest son Enzo. Um, if my, my son Enzo does not like me bringing up the fact that we're living in a simulation. He thinks, oh, he, it freaks him out, the idea of simulation. But the more and more we go digital, it does appear that, that we could be right, right? I think, I think Elon Musk says there's a million to one chance that we're not in a simulation, meaning that we are you know, 99.99% in a simulation, digital world. It really feels like it. And you're going to form your own country with your own currency that's digital. Yeah. It's going to be some sort of blockchain where you're going to get a number assigned to you, walk around, you pay for things that way. Uh, we could have like a smart code, sure. Uh, I don't know about the, as far as this codes for the vaccinations. We'd have what's to the likelihood of this passing or whatever? Or has it, what's, where's it at? And the, do you actually have any data to support where this is? Or is this just someone's hypothesis, a guess, uh, a hope, a dream, a prayer? Yeah, it's just a, it's just a, a bill that is still in committee. Um, in Nevada. Yeah, in Nevada. So a country within a, in a state. Yes. So basically we would be... Uh, I mean, like a subreddit, a substate. Yeah, that's right. basically what it would be. How many? Uh, how many people on Reddit now? Eight point five million. This is on that uh, Wall Street bets. Yeah, on WSB. Is the next bet that GME is going to go back up or down? Do they? They probably don't have any capital to buy the dip. Oh, you're buying the dip, yeah. So I mean, I mean, obviously it's not a dip. Uh, for the record, I bought five hundred shares today at like fifty-five. Just. I had to buy the dip. Was that like in just in solidarity with Wall Street bets? Oh yeah, right when it hit fifty five, yeah. I started buying some. I had no choice, but yeah. only five hundred shares. Because like right, right, either it's going to bounce back to a hundred, or it's going to go to zero, like my poker hand. Yeah, I mean, it could just go back to fourteen. Would that be crazy? It would be. That guy uh, is going to testify on Capitol Hill, February eighteenth. The F bets F F value guy. Yes, he will be there. Um, the CEO of Robinhood. Right. Uh, and a couple other folks from the Reddit, the moderators there. So that should be very interesting. Hmm. What's exciting right now? I feel like the market market is hitting new. I think the S&P was this close to hitting a new high today. Yes, it was. Uh, I wanted to cover one other thing about the situation with Hindenburg and Clover Health. I think because uh, uh, SPAC Jesus is going to be tied up with that. I th he, he came out and said Carson. That's Carson. He's less likely to run for uh, California governor. Carson, I call them Spack Jesus. So, I think Hindenburg called him something different here. What did they call him? The king, I like the, the guy. I think he's very, very smart, and I would Spacks. not bet a oh, king of Spacks. Yeah, I would not bet against him. I assure you that Shamat did his research. Come on, really? Yeah. He didn't get to be a billionaire and own the own the. Uh, warriors and own everything else and start every SPAC and send people to space and go, whoops, I won't look at Clover. Come on. Well, Hindenburg. I mean, 23 hours ago, he did tweet SPACs may be easy to raise capital, but they are hard to execute and success isn't guaranteed. Good luck to all the players. And did he see this coming? Because Hindenburg just dropped the bomb uh, a little while ago, like today. Really? So you mean, did he see a negative report on Clover coming? Yeah. Maybe. So we'll see. So where are you putting capital to work? Well, I'd like to just wait and Chinese see. Chinese scam stocks? No, we're not doing that. We're, we're, it seems like you, you brought up something, went up 1,200%. Well, no the, yeah, that was AACG, but that was just the risk on play. We're not saying, by the way, it's a scam. I mean, the, I'm looking for entry re-entry on some of the uh, the silver miners, the solid silver miners. Sure. So if I were to deploy capital, it would be on AG. I saw a report on CNN that said the the last decade's been really slow for EV, but there's a tsunami coming. And when you see Ford, when you see Ford talk about EV and you see what's happening with Apple, there does appear to be a tsunami coming. There is a perfect storm. This administration also is right. So you got the wind at your back. You yeah. got Joe Biden saying, "Hey, everything's going to be EV, including my toaster," and then. <laughs> and, and and if you burn your toast, you're going to be polluting the environment. So don't burn your toast. He literally is all over this EV thing, right? And now Ford's putting in $29 billion of capital. Apple's going to put in, to start a car company, what kind of capital? I mean, Holy smokes. Yeah. 
Can you believe that CapEx? That's going to be sick. We're going to electrify the entire country. So, right. I mean, we're, we're behind, we're, you know, way behind the eight ball as far as infrastructure. I mean, there's right. a lot to do. Right. This EV thing is just going to be rampant. It's, it's, it is the internet of 1995, right? And, yeah. and beyond, right? Where it is like the dot com. It's a dot com. But will it be dot a, EV? Will it be a bubble? Like, will people, I mean, is it going to co- have a, a huge reduction in the carbon footprint of America? I mean, you know, it's funny. A bunch of years ago, when my kids, my first Miranda and Chase, my oldest, were little, I bought her a Barbie Jeep and him a bar, like a, a sil- uh, Silverado, uh, you know, truck, remote, a Chevy yeah. truck. Yeah. And you plugged it in and it drove around on a battery. It was EV back then. That, I wonder I mean, what. Cutting edge EV, like little things for kids. And now as adults, we're getting EV. What kind of range did he have? Like uh, city block? I don't know how far you could go. Maybe 15 minutes or something. I had the... Uh, but it was the coolest thing ever. See, I grew up poor, so I never yeah. had the EV car. Right. But then my kids, you know, you always want your kids to do better than you, so you get them the EV car and the Barbie doll a Jeep and everything. And so it was... But they were EV 15 years ago. Yeah, that was that was just the start of everything. So we're going to see what happens, but I really want to get one of those EV Hummers when they come out. Uh, Why is everyone big on the EV Hummer? I don't know. It's just really cool. I, you know, it's a sense of pride, you know, buy an American EV car. It's just something i want to do right so so what do you make of the market right now because it seems like to me there's not a lot of risk on right now the only risk on are, are the the pump and dumps I, I, why do you keep talking about those because those are the ones How do you know they're not there's not news coming on them i mean sometimes they 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 move ahead of news why do you call them pump and dumps well today there was no catalyst and a stock went up 1275 percent. i didn't own it yeah i didn't do anything and not, not me so i mean you know with like sava you know, obviously you have all. But they had data. Yeah, of course. That's not a pump and dump. And then stocks moved in sympathy with them. Right. Right. Like OCGN and mm-hmm. what was the other one you mentioned a uh, AX. Some, there was another one. That, oh yeah, yeah. A V A A V A V uh, X L or yeah. something like that. Right. So it had a pretty big move. Well, do we want to even uh, we want to talk about Bitcoin and Ethereum? We didn't really talk about that. Bitcoin. Let's talk. Thirty-seven thousand. I saw thirty-seven thousand six hundred. Yeah. Let me get an exact quote for you. Uh, Ethereum the 16. Quote Joe, Jordan Belford. I'll have an exact confirmation for you right now. 1650. Check Ethereum too if you don't mind. Just I, curious. Uh, I know. When you get 51, you have to wear glasses. It's just a terrible thing. So you got uh, Bitcoin at 37,608 as of right this second. This is approximately uh, almost two o'clock. And then you have Ethereum at 1640. Uh, doing great here. They're just wonderful trading. I mean, these things are holding in like champs. So Ethereum in January. Oh, oh, oh. You what? know what? I did not want to forget. I do not want to forget. I'm going to put it in a link below. There is a great interview uh, with the, wo- the woman from who heads up ARK Investments, the top ETF in the oh, world. Oh, yeah. I saw it yesterday. I was like, oh, I watched it last night till 1 in the morning. It is, it is stellar. It, you, in fact, you cannot mi- – the link is going to be below. Uh, you cannot miss this interview. It is – well, I mean, she's been she she tells you everything she's trading, right? She's been calling EV Tesla forever, other biotechs. This she's like she's like the Peter Lynch of the of the 2020. What is that? Is she you, like Green Jesus? She's incredible. Kathy Kathy Wood is her name, and yeah. she is a rock star. I mean, this and so she was on Yahoo Finance, and I saw an interview with her, and I was like mesmerized by her comments about uh ev cars are coming and stuff like that it was mesmerizing you got to see this interview in fact if you see the interview if you see the interview you watch the interview and oh, how are we going to do this so i'm going to get a good idea here i want to give away some merch let's give away let's give a let's give away a risk on how do we do this come on yeah josh how do we give away merch what are we going to do here yeah. Comment below what, and then we'll. How do we get a hold of them to cut if they comment below? That's to leave their email. You'll take care of that. Yeah, we're going to give away ten T-shirts to the first ten comments below. Um, but do yourself a favor, watch this, uh, Kathy Wood. Yeah, ten T-shirts. Yeah, leave your email below so we can. Uh, we can. I give don't you think guys. they want to leave your email. I think they just want to comment, and then we'll get a hold of them. Right? We can do that on the back end. Okay, that's fine. Because they leave their email, then they're going to get spammed. Yeah, good point. Right. But you're going to get a risk on T-shirt. Um, they even make ones for big people like myself. Uh, sorry, Josh. Was that a, is that like that's not a smedium? It's a smedium. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
What's a medium? <laughs> it's not a small, not a medium. It's a <laughs> medium. You know, you're in between, like a one-off. I, yeah, I'm kind of like in the multi-Xers, yeah, <laughs> whatever. But I fit in a Ferrari, and see, that's the key. I still fit in a Ferrari. So that's why you like the Ferrari so much. No one likes Lamborghinis, dude. Only you drive a Lamborghini. An orange Lamborghini. Yeah. I mean, you look ridiculous. We, like uh, a tangerine driving around with your head sticking out. You want to race? <laughs> we did, actually. <laughs> what do um, we got up? What's up next? Let's see what I wanted to cover. Uh, oh, yeah. I know you don't like the uh, me to cover politics. It's not really political I don't anyway. dislike that you cover politics. Well, let's just touch on one thing that's kind of kind of awkward in Wisconsin. Okay. okay. So the Republican-controlled House and Senate has repealed the uh, Democratic governor's mask mandate. Uh, they were getting a little crazy with the masks here recently. I saw people wanting us to double and triple up with masks. I personally um, would not double and triple up masks. I do wear a mask where it's mandatory. You do wear a mask. Yeah, I of course. All the time. But now they're repealing the mask mandate in Wisconsin. You're a professional guy. So, yeah, of course. So the cheeseheads are at war up there. I just wanted to bring that up. That's all. Are they just upset that Green Bay didn't make the... The play, I mean, the Super Bowl. Oh, I mean, Aaron Rodgers is a stud, but yeah, I mean, he, Tom Brady is going to his tenth Super Bowl. It's amazing. First year in Tampa, the Super Bowl's in Tampa. Could you imagine? It's the first time in its history ever that uh, that the Super Bowl is being played, uh, like the the team in the city, right, and their home field advantage. They're it's just incredible. I saw on a different topic, Ken Frazier's leaving, retiring from Merck. Uh, there's been an, a kind of iconic uh, uh, career at Merck. Ken Frazier's leaving. And I also saw that there's a little bit of war on high-speed trading linked to war, to Robinhood with the SEC, Ken Griffiths involved in the, mm -hmm. in the middle of this Reddit investigation revolt. There's some good uh, commentary out there on CNN about this. Are you talking about Robinhood selling uh, private information from their users to uh, allegedly? You yeah, gotta, allegedly. You, what kind of reporter are you if you don't use allegedly? In well, front listen. Of this is the day and age of fake. You're going to get sued. I mean, that's what it feels like to me. Well, okay, allegedly. You got to use words like allegedly, plan to, hope to, think about, whatever. They could possibly have sold private information to uh, you know high frequency trading information or data, allegedly. Right. To allegedly to hedge funds like uh, Citadel. Allegedly. Yeah, I could have allegedly done that. And allegedly Janet Yellen received uh, speaking fees from Citadel. No, they did. There's no allegedly. She said that she did. But I will tell you, one of the things that we got to pay attention to, and you know, a little bit of off topic, we should have talked about this beginning, is Nordstrom's is getting crushed. Nordstrom says they expect fiscal 2021 revenue. Uh to rise more than 25% from 2021 20 levels mm -hmm. their digital their digital business is making up about 50% of their sales versus 33 a lot of changes going on at Nordstrom's well, their that's... sales outlook is promising even though um, they're moving towards Nordstrom Rack which kind of makes them a discounter have you been to uh, retail malls or outlets lately do they still exist? Actually, there's one in Vegas I've been to. Okay. Well, it's kind of busy, actually. It's busy, but you can't try on clothes there for the most part. You've got to just bring it home. So why wouldn't you just order online and have it shipped to the comfort of your home, try it on, and then return it that way? Why would you Why would you go out to the retail store to shop when you can't try anything on at the store? It makes no sense to me. So mm -hmm. I've been buying online. I like going to the stores. Yeah. I mean, I like to go out to, uh, to, the, to the restaurants and eat. But yeah. There's a revolution going on at Nordstrom's Rack. I know my wife likes to shop there. Nordstrom's is known for that. If there's a discount, my wife finds it within 300 miles. And the level of service there is right. really, really good. Right. So. But I'm glad to see Nordstrom's, is, uh, their online business is expanding. Sales are the dis sales outlook was a little disappointing, but they're, you know, it is what it is, right? There, there's going to be a few survivors. Is Nordstrom's one of them? Yeah. Hopefully. Are you trying to say that GameStop should be doing the same thing? Oh, they're not completely online by now? No, there's... I mean, just yesterday, I told the CEO on Camry, I recommend you close your retail stores and go online. He wasn't able to execute that in one day. <laughs> That's a shame. Right. Uh, your stock got pummeled for not listening to me. <laughs> just kidding. Come on, man. What's the sarcasm here today? I don't know what's up. I mean, it's at 50 still. It was 14. It was 52, but just it was like a week ago, it was 480. That's crazy. But uh, listen, I'm, I'm not making a commentary on this, but... You got to have sympathy for, listen, Wall Street bets, they're very smart people. They came up with a great thesis and they did well. But when you attract 
that much capital. I wonder who was getting, who was on the other side of that trade. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about it, right? You know that, uh, was it Melvin Capital was short? You knew that because they had a report. Are you sure about that? Well, (laughs) give me a break. Listen, here's the point. You're doing that to me all the time. Conspiracy theory. Allegedly. All right. No, okay. He he even admitted he covered it short. So he he said it on CNBC. But then you attract all that capital to the other side. Then they started betting against the retail investor. The institutions are going to say, where's the value, right? Yeah. This is the whole Warren Buffett, short term, the market's a voting machine. Long term, it's a weighing machine. The weighing machine's voting in right now on, on what's going to happen to the future of GameStop. The retail buyers don't exist. I mean, they're, they're all bag holders. You know, obviously, I'm generalizing. But wow, that's a big general. Where in the world are the buyers? They haven't stepped in. It's 52 now. I mean, where will the buyer step in? Right. So that's where we're at right what now. Are, I mean, is there people getting short again? I mean, it's possible. I haven't looked at the borrow rates. We'd have to look. It's scary. That I mean, that thing being up and down $100 at a time. I mean, it's... They very, could rekindle. Yeah. They they could. What if we get a couple of big whales involved who just decide to, you know, put a uh, you know some capital to the cause, if you will? Right. It's possible. What's the cause now? If you've already broken Melvin Capital, yeah. what's the cause right now? Well, the cause would probably be to make sure that these hedgies don't get arrogant and confident and that there's always potential for a single line stock to get, you know, uh, exploited and, and, and get short and get squeezed. What's the risk on trade? Overnight, <clears throat> the risk on is going to be the, uh, the Chinese stocks. Yeah, I disagree. I think it's Ford. I think Ford's going higher, but I'm not making a recommendation. This is a show for entertainment purposes. I am a 30-year Wall Street veteran. I am executive chairman of all global on the new york america new york american god can i speak and on top of that i've been investing in activist deals many 13 d's i'm out there i've been in wall street for more than 30 years jason is a professional trader and poker player this is risk on we appreciate you watching us comment down below if there's any topics you want us to cover I'm long Ford for full disclosure. I'm long Google for full disclosure, the things we talked about today. I did trade that METX. Yeah, in and out. We're not recommending anything. Do your research, and we'll see you tomorrow.